August 3rd, 9.47 a.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games, and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. I've been wanting to do this Let's Play for a while, because this is probably one of my favorite series of all time, and I'm just really excited to play this for you guys. Uh, if you want to go ahead and skip to just the part where I'm playing stuff, uh, go ahead and go to the time code on screen. But uh, just to quickly clarify some things, I'll only be doing the first four cases because I'm playing this on the DS. And this was back when they added the fifth case, but the writing only said that there were four cases. Like in the sequel, uh, the events of this game are mentioned and they don't mention the fifth case. Uh, in later versions they do, but for this I'll just be doing the first four cases, plus those are the ones that I'm most informed on. And also, I won't be doing like too many voices, like there are some characters where I, sh where I really do need to do the voice, or do a voice for them, but I'll mostly just be doing my voice. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the game. Right here, we're playing as Phoenix, and he says, Boy, am I nervous. And then, this is Mia Fey, who's basically our mentor. And... Yeah, she's basically just, like... She's basically our mentor, and, uh... She's here to watch us do our first case. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on the murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your clients as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yeah. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out in any way I can. I just really want to help him. This is always like a bit weird how like he reinforces how much he really wants to help him. And here's our client. My life, everything, it's all over. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death, despair, oh! I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Great observation, Mia. <laughs> Um, yeah. And so this is Larry Butts, who's, uh, he's certainly a caricature. I mean, like, I won't try to, like, give my opinions too much throughout this, because I want you to watch this and form your own opinion on characters and stuff like that, but I'm not the biggest fan of him, and I don't think too many else, too many other people are either. Nick. He calls us Nick as like a nickname, <laughs> get it, nickname, but because our name is Phoenix, so he took like the Nick part of Phoenix. Hey Larry, I'm so guilty, tell them I'm guilty, I usually give this guy like a surfer dude voice, give me the death sentence, I ain't afraid to die. What's wrong Larry? Oh, it's all over, I, I'm finished, finished, I can't live in a world without her, I can't. Who, who took her away from me Nick? Who did this? So yeah, he's just dramatic like this. Hmm. The person who were responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts my best friend since grade school. Our school is saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He's a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 2. So yeah, all of the uh, trials begin at 10 a.m. I think in, like, one of the later games, they changed it to 9.30 for no reason. But yeah, also, since I'm going to be talking and reading a lot, I have a glass of water with me right here. 
So if you if you see any conspicuous cuts, just know that I had to take a sip of water. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. So yeah, here's Winston Payne, which is a pun. Most of the characters in Ace Attorney, their names are puns. So this is Winston Payne, which is a pun on winced in pain. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem, Mr. Wright. This is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Y yes, Your Honor. Gulp, hand shaking, eyesight fading. You might need to get that checked out, man. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. So we have three options, Phoenix Wright, Larry Butts, and Mia Fey. I think in some of the later versions of this game, if you choose Mia Fey, then you get an achievement. Uh, but our, the defendant is Larry Butts. The defendant, if you don't know, is whoever is being accused of the crime. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh-oh. No, no way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? That is kind of weird, like... Uh... Oh, the victim. Of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. I would too, honestly. If this, like, guy came to court, and this, and he's defending this guy whose life is on the line, and the, the lawyer doesn't even know the name of the person who was killed. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. So we go ahead and check the court record here. And you'll see on the bottom screen, which is the screen on the right, uh, we have a list of evidence. And if we go ahead and check the different things, we have the attorney's badge. No one, no one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. And we also have the autopsy report, Cindy's autopsy report. Time of death, July 31st, 4 to 5 p.m., Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. We don't just have that though, if you press R, you also have profiles. We have Mia Fey, age 27. Chief attorney at Fey & Co, my boss and a very good defense attorney. Larry Butts, age 23, the defendant in this case, a likable guy who was my friend in grade school. Cindy Stone, age 22, the victim in this case, so now we know the name of the victim. A model, she lived in an apartment by herself. Winston Payne, age 52, Jesus, the prosecutor for this case, lacks presence, generally bad at getting his points across. But so yeah, that's everyone we have in, up until now. So we know the victim in this case is Cindy Stone. You get some pretty funny answer, you get some pretty funny dialogue if you choose either Mia Fey or Cinder Block. I think if you choose Cinder Block, the judge says something like, the victim in this case is a victim of murder, not of poor naming, or something like that. Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, please tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... And if we check the autopsy report, cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma, or in other words, hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. If you ever see blue text in parentheses, that's just Phoenix's thoughts. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? I wonder if I should give this guy a lisp. I'll give him, like, a very subtle one. Yes, Your Honor? That's not subtle, but... 
As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepted it into evidence. And so, as the trial goes on, more and more evidence will be put into your court record, and you can always check the court record to see what it says. The statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. It also tells you who it was submitted by. Uh, and so we got the autopsy report from Mia Fey, and the, and the attorney's badge is one of our possessions. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Um... Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Well, as you'll learn later in the series, Larry saying something unfortunate is inevitable. Ahem. Mr. Butt, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Watch it, buddy! We were great together. We were like Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butt, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. The Adipt returned overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it, lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. Interesting note is that in the Japanese version, it was red. I don't know if there's some kind of like cultural thing behind that, or if it was just a random change. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Now if we go ahead and check the court record. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on July 30th, the day before the murder. I don't I think I read that line, but... The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears he had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? <laughs> yes, yeah, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! <laughs> we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want her to answer- I want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Let's go ahead and stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question- ugh, That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof, wince, because he's winced in pain. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die, I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. It's very dramatic. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused and motive are clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. I think if you answer either of those, then you basically get to the same spot. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of your murder, did you not? I, I changed up his lisp all of a sudden. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Listen, I'm not a lawyer, but don't say that in, in a court of law. What do I do? Uh, let's have him answer honestly this time. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, y yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Crud. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. 
Larry also, like, is very bad at telling when a situation is serious. Like, he just admitted that around the time of the crime, he was at the scene of the crime, he was like, it's not, you know, it just, that's normal. <laughs> Our first objection of the series, Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Man, the uh, peanut gallery just keeps talking. <laughs> order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. I feel like there's two types of lisps that I can do. Like, there's one that I do, like, at the front of my mouth with, like, my tongue between my teeth. And then there's one that I can do in, like, the back of my mouth. Which is just, like, I keep my teeth open whenever I pronounce, like, S's and stuff like that. I think this one is much more fitting for Mr. Payne. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sott to the stand. Get it? Because he's the witness, so his name is Frank Sott. And if you saw the opening cutscene from earlier... Yeah, he's the killer. They always tell you who it is at the very beginning of the first case. But as we go later on, they, they'll stop telling you and you have to figure it out on your own. And so, uh, I told you who it was just there, but um, as we go on into later cases, I, I won't say that. Just in case this is anyone's first experience with Ace Attorney, I just want it to be spoiler free and don't spoil stuff in the comments. Mr. Shaw, you sell a newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? That had a lot of S's that time. Oh, oh, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sot, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witnesses account. So here is our first testimony of the series. And I'm excited. So this is the first thing. It tells you the title of the testimony. And as we go on, they'll just say what they did and we'll get to cross-examine it later. But we'll get to that. Witnesses account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 o'clock p.m. The man who ran with that was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? At the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Shaw used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout added to the court record, and we'll go ahead and see that in a second. Now, Mr. Wright. Blackout record. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. So, during the murder, uh, the there was a blackout. And so, none of the electronic devices were working. Whoops. Also, I think Mr. Sod is known here. Frank Sod, age 36, discovered Miss Stone's body. Newspaper salesman who saw Larry flee the scene. Y yes, er, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? Okay, here's another thing. I'll get to it in a little bit. I'll go ahead and read this. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh... What exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. 
Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there somewhere. I said that as if she was going to say somewhere, but then the sentence ended abru abruptly. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. <laughs> Touch the court record button and point out contradictions in the testimony. So it's time for our first cross-examination. And <laughs> it looks like before this, Phoenix didn't even know what a cross-examination was. What are the qualifications for passing the bar in this world? Because, like... And it's not just, like, a Phoenix being adult thing. Like, most of the time, whenever we go into, like, whenever whenever he plays different lawyers later in the series, they'll also be confused about cross-examinations and stuff like that, which is really weird. Anyways, this video will probably be a bit longer. But it's the first episode, so who cares? I thought for this series I'll go ahead and try to show as much dialogue as I can, so I'll be like pressing everything because if you're just going through the game just trying to do what you're supposed to do and like get stuff immediately, then you'll miss out on a lot of really funny dialogue. There probably won't be much in here, but uh, I thought I'd go ahead and like do that for all cases. I'll probably like have a timestamp thing where it uh where I'll, like, have a timestamp thing in the comments where I get to the actual part where I'm contradicting whatever the person is saying. But yeah. So just to explain cross-examinations, uh, first of all, if you go through all of the dialogue and you can't find anything, uh, usually there will be a hint right at the end. That's all of it. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Examine the court record button if something strikes you as being suspicious. Then find the evidence that contradicts his testimony and present it to him. So sometimes it's helpful and tells you exactly what like, you're supposed to do. And sometimes it's very vague, like right there it just said, look at the court record and present the thing. So the controls, we have two buttons at the uh, top corners of the bottom screen. We have press and present. If you press press, Phoenix will say hold it and he'll go ahead and inquire about different statements. Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He just seems strange to me, that's all. He, like he was mad yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. The defense requests that the witness refrain from conjecture. Of course, what the witness means is, is the man he saw looks suspicious. So, what happened next? And there's also the Y button, which if you press, you can say hold it into your uh, DS's microphone if you want. But I'll just be pressing L and R. You can also use L and R. And there's also present, which allows you to go to your court record, and if you find uh, like something that contradicts the statement, you can press X and present it to to them, or you can like hold down Y and say objection. Uh, but right now we'll just be pressing stuff. Hold it! Half open, you say. Yes, yes, the door was open halfway, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd, in a big city like this, I thought. I see, and what happened next? Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was half open, you see. Isn't it only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. Sure, words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. Hmm. What did pain cut him off so quickly? So, you look into the apartment. What happens then? So, also, a thing to note is that in the Ace Attorney world, this is basically a uh, sort of dystopian like future where like the legal system is all messed up and it heavily favors the prosecution side and it's more of like a guilty until proven innocent thing instead of in the real world where it's innocent until proven guilty 
So just keep that in mind. Also note that this game was written in 2001. Uh, and this game's idea of distant future was 2016. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. Are you sure she was dead? W well, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look so fatal to anyone. <laughs> Very well, what happened next? I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. So you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes, I mean, no, nothing. Okay, what happened next? Keep that in mind for later. I thought to call the police immediately. You thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police. What happened next? However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Whoops, I did not mean to skip that. The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no, no it wasn't, right. <laughs> but you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, that, I, I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. If your phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer at the nearby apartments. Ah, uh, right. What time did you call again? I remember the time exactly. It was 1 o'clock p.m. Which is a bit of a fishy statement, but we'll get to that later. 1 o'clock p.m. Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. He seems really confident. 1 o'clock p.m.? Right, doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict them. Sometimes if you press on statements where you're supposed to present stuff, then uh, different characters will be like, Hey, something's fishy about that statement. And so I went ahead and repeated that. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. We press him again. Are you absolutely 100% positive? Yes, it was him. No mistake about it. The witness says he's certain. Is it just gonna do the same thing again? Okay, for some reason it keeps like repeating. Like, normally whenever you press something, it goes onto the next thing. But this time it's like going back to the same statement. So once you get past that, it'll just do the hint. And so, let's go ahead and get to the actual contradiction, now that we've gotten all of the dialogue. So if we go ahead and go over to this right here, uh, it says, I remember the time exactly, it was 1 o'clock p.m. However, if we go ahead and check out our court record, it says that Cindy Stone died at 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. You found the body at 1 o'clock p.m.? You're sure? Yes, it was 1 o'clock p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There's nobody to, er, no body to find at 1 o'clock p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that's, oh, uh. This is trivial, the witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sot, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 o'clock p.m.? I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember something just now. Or I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? And so the witness is like, hey, I remember something. And then they give another testimony. I want to see if I can... Okay, I can save here. So I'll go ahead and 
uh, ended off here. I'll go ahead and do one more. I'll go ahead and press the A button again, and we'll get back here next time. I'll just have this going so that you guys can listen to music during the outro. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and continue Frank Sod's cross-examinations and testimonies and all that stuff, and hopefully finish the case. The first one is uh, very short, and so we should be able to finish it within the next, like, half hour or so. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!